Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 933 for the 13th of September. Frontline Changes report as usual is already out. So if you want a shorter version, you can watch the Frontline Changes report. Uh, sit wrap. The summary will be actually the more complete version of all the things that had happened. Uh, including things that you may think that nothing has happened, but something happened. So, anyway, uh, there is still more frontline changes since the frontline changes report due to Joe locations uh, information that has dropped. Uh, over at Snagost, uh, the Russian forces has been Joe located uh, further in over here, just on the southeast of Snagost, confirming Russian advance. In this area here, the full extent of the capture is still not yet corroborated just yet. So no, which is why it's very important to continue to track the geolocations locations if possible or the mapping by the Ukrainian side to confirm that the Russians claims are actually reality. So so if not, the Ukrainians are still in Veshnivka, they are still in the 10th of October, you know, all these things. So anyway, that's all for Snagos. The next frontline change is over at uh, Krakorivka. Uh, over in the Bakhmut front, this is Bakhmut city, and at Krakorivka, the Russian forces has been geolocated. Oh my god, why this, this, up, uh, yeah, weird. So, Russian forces has been geolocated in two different locations. In the same video, but no, these are two different geolocators. One is pro-Ukrainian, this pro-Russian. And uh, the Russian forces basically have advanced in the south of Krakorivka, and uh, which means that the Russians are making advance towards the canal and probably more or less got there uh so so yeah this is a quite an important important development uh it does change the tactical situation a little bit and uh it is most likely that the russians have the entire of the forest as well most likely so we'll see how this develop as the russians start to you know start to encircle uh gregorivka i think then they will see the assault entering into Greek of uh, Krakorivka. So that's all for this frontline change. And the next frontline change is over at Vodiane. So there is new uh, developments over at Vodiane. The Russian forces have started to uh, attack into the the South Donbass tree coal mine, the Pevdeno Donbaska tree. So the Russians have continued to make advance over in the Vodiane region. This is an expected uh, movement. The Ukrainians previously was de were defending in this area, but they were subject of severe airstrikes. And I think, yeah, the troops just cannot hold such a position without no, uh, without the capability to prevent uh, Russian airstrikes. So they lost the position. And uh, yeah, so no static warfare just don't work in modern day. Yeah, unless you have the means to dish out at the enemy what the enemy can dish out to you. Then you have parity in terms of power fire, firepower, then probably, yeah, that's what you can do. And at this rate, they are going towards Boho Yehavlenka. So anyway, this is also predicted. Uh, we already mentioned this before. So we're going to go into the um, strategy and tactical reporting. So uh, we'll go from the southern flank first. So uh, over in the Kherson front, we have continued fighting over at Pridiniprotsky direction. Ukrainian Defense Ministry continue to report about this. Uh, we have some frontline changes over in the Krinky region. So at Krinky region, uh, based on the Ukrainian mapping, uh, Russian forces seems to have more advanced control in the islands uh, along the Dnipro River. So this, I'm not sure when they have they updated this. They have never mentioned this in their reports. So anyway, we will continue to monitor the situation over in Krinky. But I don't think this matters a lot. Um, this island warfare, as I mentioned in the frontline changes report, is just not that important. We move into the Zaporizhia front. Over the Zaporizhia front, we have no reports of fighting around this area here. Curiously, we move into the Donets front. At the Donets front, we have fighting reported uh, in multiple locations. So, <clears throat> Russians are attacking at Zoleta Neva, Voleda, Vodiane, towards Katerinivka, Konstantinivka, Yogivka region, uh, towards Kostre and uh, over at Ukraine and over in this uh, Zelene, Zelene Perche. So these are the strategies, the overall picture. So uh, zooming in, uh, the Russians are still pushing for Zoleta Neva. So far, no more intel drop. So we do not know what's the latest development. 
Uh, over in the Voleda Vodiane region, as mentioned, uh, the Russian forces have made advance in the South Coal, uh, South Donbass coal mine tree, and they have also seemingly uh, closed up the this uh, weird line, so straighten the front line uh, all the way to the South Donbass coal mine one. Russians are also allegedly attacking in the Vod uh, Voleda region, so that's all for this area here. Uh, the the Russians continue to develop in the way that uh, no. On our side, we kind of uh, projected with a massive pincer in this direction. So it will take some time. It's not going to develop so quickly. These are uh, huge amount of grounds. So we move on. Uh, fighting is reported towards Katerinivka and fighting in the region of Konstantinivka. The Ukrainian seemingly is making a strong line around here as the Russians did not really make much advance in these areas here. Moving further north, over in the uh, Marinka region, this Marinka, by the way, Russian forces are still fighting in Hostre. Ukrainian mapping is a lot more conservative. Uh, they put the firm control as like this, and this area is grey zone. So, uh, but yeah, we follow Joe locations, and Russians are fighting in the region of Georgievka. So let's continue to watch how this goes. And uh, if you find that I sound a bit weird because I'm falling sick, I'm starting today is the first day I start to feel weird, feel weird. <clears throat> some kind of throat infection i guess so uh, i think i got my virus from my family so yeah uh, i think maybe because i lack of sleep so the immune system has dropped so yeah that's what it is fighting is reported at ukraine as well as zelani Pershi. development over in the north northwestern part of ukraine as the russian was geolocated uh attacking towards uh, this trench line so which means that the russians are continuing their operation to flanks flank the rear position of ukraine's and are most likely in the pincer coming from the south as well so uh ukrainian forces most likely still have control over ukraine's despite the russian claims so we shall continue to monitor uh, the situation uh, for those that are not un do not understand what i just said this pink map is a russian map the blue map is a ukrainian map the two maps the the two sides have different perspective of what is happening so we overlay the two maps and that's what you get the dpa's map so that we can get the reality of what actually is happening so we move on <clears throat> uh over Stelidove region there is geolo uh, geolocation of russian forces making slight advance over in mihailivka within the dacha regions so otherwise the fighting is mainly reported as fighting at Stelidove. there's no more fighting being reported at mihailivka moving further up north over in the uh, Khorodivka, Novo Khorodivka region uh, Russian forces are fighting in the Khorodivka so they, they are still fighting in this area but there's no updates uh, over at Novo Khorodivka the Russian forces have advanced over on the western part of Novo Khorodivka mapping is by Deep State US mapping they didn't put a report today which is kind of unusual uh, I mean for the past day they didn't put a summary so I basically track them, uh, go through their mapping and discover the change. Ukrainians are now having to defend uh, uh, Lysivka or Lysivka. So the Russians are continuing their Pokrov offensive after a long uh, stagnant period at this front line. And uh, Lysivka is this, <clears throat> is this banana around here. You can see this is a banana actually. Oh my god, I can't draw a banana here. Yeah, it's a banana. So... And uh, this this banana need to be eaten by the Russians before they can go for Pokrov, so so th they need to go through like this. Um, but I don't think the Russians will go be attacking uh, in just one way, uh, not just eating the banana. They need to take the Minograd as well, uh, in order to conduct a two prong attack. Uh, if it's just one prong attack, uh, one directional is a full frontal attack. Then I don't think it will be as successful. So <clears throat> let's see what the Russians gonna do. Because the Russians always do, sometimes they do very surprising things that I never expected. So let's see. Over in the northern flank uh, of the Pokrov front, Russian forces are attacking at Mario Lubivka, Novo Toreske, Vosdevizenka, Novo Alexandrivka, and Zelenopole. So this continues to be a painting operation, as I mentioned before. The lines here are very, very strong, uh, except in the direction of Zelenopole, but there's it's strategically not very important to go there anymore so that's all previously i did mention uh the russians could attack in these directions to as 
to then attack into the rear position of New York front. But the New York front is collapsing on its own due to the uh, due to the Russian onslaught directly. So there is no longer a need to go up north here because then you just get encircled uh, potentially. Uh, no, because the Ukrainians have very strong lines on two sides. So you, if they get stuck in this position, it's not going to be good. So there is no longer a need. And Konstantinivka, I don't think the Russians are intending to take it for now, it seems. Pokrov seems to be the more pressing objective. So uh, we move on into the New York front. New York front, there is only fighting reported at Dashne, Thorax, as well as Nelipivka. Uh, just to highlight, there is no Russian re Russian uh, Ministry Defense report on the wider Ukraine war uh, front because they did a weekly summary. So because of the weekly summary, we don't have the daily report, so I can't map anything. So But they do have the dailies for the curse front, or the Kurds front, so we will continue. We will we will talk about that later. Over the Bakhmut front, the fighting uh is reported at Andreevka, <coughs> Chasifia, and uh, Khrykhorivka. The front front line changes. Uh, this there's no report of fighting at Khrykhorivka. We just have the front line change. So we will continue to monitor the situation. Uh, moving further up, uh, into the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, oops. The Sivas Offensive continues. Fighting reported at Vimka, Sperne, Vakomokanyamsky, and Bilohorivka. Shelling is reported, or attacks is reported near Srebrenica, but that's about it for the Sivas front. No intel drop, which is, uh, it's been a long time, so I believe that we're going to see some uh, big things you know, coming soon. <clears throat> Over in the Kremlin front, at the Kremlin front, Russian forces are attacking Toske and Yampolivka. So nothing special about that. Uh, over in the Sviatove front, we have fighting reported at Nevsky, Makievka, Grankivka, as well as Svedoklibove. So uh, that's all. S still not much changes around here. And now we move on. To, oh, uh, there is also fighting reported at Kopanki. I, I just missed it a little bit, just by a little bit. Yeah, there's also fighting reported at Kopanki. Um, not so not sure how the Russians are attacking near here. Maybe coming from a uh, Zerene, maybe. I'm not sure. I never really see information about the capture of Nadia. So let's see. These are all Ukrainian Defense Ministry's report. Over at the Pichani front, uh, we have fighting reported at Stemakivka, towards Lozova, uh, fighting at Grishkivka and Novo Sinove. So this time around, the focus seems to be in the north northwest. So, so let's see. Uh, and over at the Kaki, uh, Kupians front, fighting reported at Sinkivka and Petropolivka. There's, there's a geolocation of a Russian airstrike in Kupians. So not very important uh, in that sense. And uh, if you zoom out a bit, you can see that it does, it does look like a pincer. Uh, but it will take a long, long time to develop as the Ukrainians are, you know, do put a lot of importance in this Kupians front. So let's move on. Over at the Khaki front, at the Khaki front, we have fighting reported at Voschans, uh, uh, Hatis Chef, Klipoke, as well as Lipsy. And uh, this is reminiscence of the you know, early days of the Khaki offensive by the Russians. So very interesting. Uh, we shall continue, continue to see how this goes. Uh, moving on, nothing special really happens over there. There is the Joe location of air, uh, artillery strike over in Bayrak uh, against uh, is a counter artillery action. So yeah, that's it. Moving into the Kursk front, which is probably what you're more interested in. Uh, in the strategic sense, the Russians are conducting their major of counter offensive in the western flank. Over here, this is the western flank. And the Ukrainians are launching their counter counter offensive over in the Grushkovo sector. The Russians are also clashing with the Ukrainians over at a Borki. So this is a main, mainly the general sense of the strategic situation. And uh, we do go into the southern flank. At the southern flank, Russians are shelling uh, Guevo as well as attacking Borki. Ukrainians are also counter-attacking around that area. Moving into the... <clears throat> uh, this is... How should I put Eastern flank. Uh, Russian forces are attacking Martinovka and uh, Kotsitsa. Uh, Sudja itself, pretty much there's no more fighting around this area here. Moving into the northern flank, at the northern flank of the Kurds front, this is the northern flank. So just now as mentioned, Kosisa is there. Uh, 
Ukrainians are attacking Kamyshevka. Russians are attacking uh, Malaya Loknia and Novaya Storkina. There is no location of Russian uh, Ukrainian troops uh, getting hit by FPV drone. It's a Ukrainian tank. The Ukrainian tank is defending this area here, preventing the Russian from attacking out of Kerry Naval. So it got destroyed. So it's a problem now. Shaolin is reported at Novo Ivanovka. <coughs> Novo Ivanovka. And then we go into the western flank. So uh, this is the western flank. At the western flank, as mentioned just now, the shelling at Novo Ivanovka, Malaya Lognia, Novaro Shurkina, or Shurkina. And uh, now we have the geolocation, as I mentioned just now. But this is not that important because we are now tracking the Russian uh, actions. Ukrainian uh, reports is going to be lagging because they are losing the, the front line here. So most likely the Russians are more correct here. The Russians are attacking at Lyubimovka, Porovsky, Darino, uh, Nikolaevo, Darino, as well as Uspenov, Ivan Uspenovka. They are shelling the rear position at Zuravka as well. So the Russians are continuing their actions uh, in this front line. And the Ukrainians... I'm not sure how well prepared are they uh, in this region here uh, to contain this uh, offensive. So the only thing that we know of that the Ukrainians are doing very objectively or very clearly is the counter-counter offensive over in the Glushkovo uh, sector. So let's talk about the Glushkovo sector. At the Glushkovo sector, uh, so this is Glushkovo. And uh, so we need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, let's... So I just want just highlight first. There's nothing happening around here. So let's let's move. So let's put the map in this way. So this Glushkovo. This is the prime objective. Uh, Glushkovo is currently you know in a pretty difficult situation due due to this river system, and the Russians have conducted uh pontoon crossings in multiple locations, which allows them to continue to search forces into this into this uh embedded zone. And the uh, Ukrainians are currently counter counter attacking in uh, Medvede, uh, Medvedze. They are attacking uh, Vasiloy at Noviput. Although Noviput seems to be captured by the Ukrainians already, and they are also attacking Tekino at the same time. So these are the three different directions that the Ukrainians are attacking. Tekino is a very strong Russian position. So this Tekino is unlikely to be successful. The Russians immediately have met the Ukrainians. SF and, no and Noviput, uh, the Russians uh, got pushed out uh, from Noviput, but the uh, clashes is currently happening in these regions. The Russians are there to meet them. Uh, Shaolin is also reported at Obodi, Katerinivka, and Pavlivka, which is the rear positions where the Ukrainians have, have their reserve force or form up positions. So this is the current situation over in the Glushkovo region. Um, my sense is that the Ukrainians are going to fail this counter-counter offensive. Uh, given the the fact that the Russians are already meeting them and the progress is very very tiny, so so let's see how this progress. In the wider shelling reports, uh, we have over at this region: Kindratevka, Khotin, Rishki, Pilopilia, Stepanivka, as well as Sumi. So, and uh, there is a. I wonder if the Ukrainians will launch an attack from this area here. So no, because they're gathering of forces there. So let's see. Um, over in the Glushkiv region, the shelling have own, reduced to the point of only uh, Pustokhorod as well as Glushkiv. I wonder if the, Ukra the Ukrainians have given up uh, an attempt to attack uh, in this direction. And they have now moved the forces <coughs> to this counter-counter offensive uh, zone. So that they can actually you know, relieve the Ukrainian forces over at the, uh, Glush uh, the, the Curse front. So let's see how this develops. Anyway, this is the uh, summary for the day of 933 for the 13th of September. Press the like button, subscribe. You see, I have no voice, but I still talk. You know? So help me subscribe, press the like button, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. And check out the Frontline Changes Plus conclusion uh, here. And I'll see you guys in the next update.